Shalom. Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. My name is Les Lawrence with Elisha Vision Ministries. Glad to have you with us today. And we have a lot to cover. I want to just start with this declaration that I will stand with Israel. I will bless Israel. I will pray for Israel. God, we pray for the peace, protection, and salvation of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so let's just go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we do pray for the peace of Jerusalem and, we, and for salvation. Pray for wisdom for Prime Minister Netanyahu and the decision makers. Pray, Father God, that you'll give them the courage to finish this war in Gaza uh, so that the, the deaths and, the, and the, all the other problems would, would end and not be any more issues. And we pray, for uh, Lord, for protection for the troops. And thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. In the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua ben Yehovah, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, um, I did one blog post this week. Uh, you can find my blogs at ElishaVision.com. ElishaVision.com. This was on supernatural fear and weak faith. Uh, terrorism is the use of supernatural fear to dominate us. And our only defense is supernatural faith in God. And uh, this relates back to one up about a month ago. I did a blog post called Supernatural Faith. And I pointed out that terrorists, have supernatural faith. Um, the problem is that Christians don't live in supernatural faith. We're given that faith. We're given that gift of faith. And yet we, we live in fear and under the domination of terrorism and all of that uh, because uh, that's actually Satan's uh, method. So we need to learn uh, how to rise up and, and have courage and stand in faith uh, because greater than is he that's in us than he is in the world. <laughs> um, Jesus said that in 1 John 4, 4, uh, or John said it, I guess. And uh, Revelation said they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to the death. And then the last scripture I use in my blog was uh, the story of Elisha and the Syrian army surrounding him. And the, Elisha's servant was panicking, and, and uh, Elisha said, Jehovah, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then Jehovah opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Elisha had said to him, more are they that are with us than they that are with them. I want you to hear that. There are more of God's heavenly resources and angels and Holy Spirit power with us than with the enemy. They do have supernatural power from the devil. But the devil's a created being just in rebellion against his creation and his creator. But God himself, the creator, is in us by his Holy Spirit. And we can overcome the enemy. Hallelujah. Well, let's go ahead and get into the, uh, the news. Uh, sundown tonight, uh, Sunday night, May 5th in, in the West, uh, is the beginning of Holocaust Remembrance Day. And uh, this little cartoon uh, in Hebrew, day of, of uh, Holocaust, is called Yom HaShoah. Uh, and in 1959, Israel established a day to remember the Nazi attempt to destroy us. Now in 2024, the threat has returned. This is the first Holocaust remembrance since the uh, October 7th massacre, which was the worst massacre of Jewish civilians since the Holocaust. So it's a very sober day and being observed in Israel. Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke at Yad Vashem uh, uh, today, this evening. He said that to the world, we will fight alone if we have to. Never again is now. And a powerful, powerful message. He spoke in Hebrew and in English. And the president of Israel, Herzog, said October 7th was not the Holocaust because today we have Israel and the IDF. And I'd, I'd like to just emphasize that, that. The point is that if it wasn't for Israel being in their own country and having their own army, that that Holocaust attempt by Hamas wouldn't have ended in one day. It would have continued, and they would have wiped out all the Jews. That's it's the same spirit uh, that was there in Nazi Germany in the 30s and 40s. Here is. Uh, a Palestinian Muslim in Poland at Auschwitz saying to the Jews, 
by the name of the God of Islam, willing, you will return to the camp. You belong here. It's actually saying that the Jews are come back to the concentration camp. That's the spirit is still around. It's a demonic spirit. It, it hasn't died. It's still here, just in different people. And, uh, of course, here's another rabbi in Israel saying, God was there on October 7th, just as he was in 1948. You can't ask where God was when tragedy strikes, but ignore his presence in positive situations. And his reference in 1948 is just three, hour, three years after the Holocaust, Israel was reborn miraculously as a modern nation. And that's why there now is a home for the Jews, and they can have their own army and, and defend themselves. And of course, uh, even beyond all of that, only the protection of God will preserve them ultimately. We know that. Well, this weekend, there have been 20 bomb threats in New York synagogues uh, just in this one, uh, ju actually just yesterday, I believe, 20 bomb threats in 20 different synagogues. The anti-Semitism is going crazy in the United States. Netanyahu says, IDF will enter Rafa with or without a deal. We need to pray that he'll stay strong to that commitment and have courage because all the pressures of the world are against him right now, and including our own government. Uh, the IDF plans for Rafa operation draw on extensive Israeli experience. The army has already conducted large-scale urban warfare sweeps in Khan Yunus and Gaza City, also in, both in Gaza. And I don't know why the United States keeps saying Israel must prove they can evacuate the civilians. They did that already in these two big cities in Gaza. They can do the same in Rafa. But for some reason, the U.S. Uh, says they don't believe that Israel is going to do it. Well, they will. Uh, Netanyahu said to Blinken, uh, we will not accept a deal that ends war. One of the main demands of Hamas is they'll release the hostages and they'll cease fire if Israel withdraws all of their troops from Gaza and stops the war. That means Hamas wins. They live to fight another day. It just can't be allowed. Israel cannot agree to that, and they won't. Now, this is one of the most shocking things. This is a headline just today, May 5th. Biden administration puts hold on U.S. ammunition shipment to Israel. That is one of the most traitorous, uh, uh, rebellious actions not just against Israel, but against Jehovah God. And I believe that the Netanyahu, or excuse me, the Biden administration, the Biden administration is cruising for major judgment uh, by the Lord himself. And uh, this is really serious because those who bless Israel will be blessed. Those who curse Israel will be cursed. To deny Israel ammunition in a time of war is certainly cursing Israel. And, uh, the boomerang effect is more per true than gravity. It's going to happen. There will be judgment of God on, on Biden and the administration. Uh, an interesting scripture from Proverbs 29, 12. If a ruler pays attention to lies, all his servants become wicked. That's what's happening in the Biden administration. They're believing lies and telling lies. And all his servants become wicked. I hadn't noticed that verse for a while. That's pretty profound. Well, Israel will, under no circumstances, end the war for a hostage deal. Again, I just said that. That's just uh, non-negotiable for Israel. They won't stop the war until they finish Hamas. So all the demands of the nations and Biden himself will not stop them. The CIA chief heads to Qatar as hostage deal talks with Hamas are near collapse. Uh, just yesterday, there were a lot of hopeful uh, comments. Oh, uh, Hamas is about to agree, but they still won't change their one demand that Israel must withdraw all their troops from Gaza. So it's not going to happen. And, uh, and I hope the, the talks do collapse because the best hope for the hostages is for Israel to get into Rafah quick and rescue the hostages directly. Uh, they can't be uh, playing games with Hamas and l release a few each week. That's what the deal uh, they're talking about, a few hostages a week for four weeks and then another six weeks. No, not going to happen. So is the operation into Rafah imminent? 
Israel br b briefs the U.S. on a plan to move the Gazans from Rafah. And every time Israel gives them uh, plans of what they're going to do, the U.S. still says, oh, we haven't seen any, we haven't seen any plan yet, or it's not good enough. And part of the problem is uh, the way Israel uh, evacuated civilians from Gaza City and Khan Yunus is that they went into neighborhood by neighborhood and announced, now we're going to, all the civilians in this neighborhood get out in 24 hours or 10 hours, whatever it is, uh, because we're going to move into this neighborhood with our troops. If they told the U.S., the, the actual literal plan, uh, neighborhood by neighborhood in Rafah, someone in the U.S. would leak the plans and Hamas would actually be able to counterattack. So they can't give the U.S. all the details. And so the U.S. is demanding it as an excuse to be able to say uh, they oppose the invasion entirely. And uh, I know who's going to win this argument. God is. <laughs> Uh, the IDF is going to establish a safe zone for Rafah evacuees in central Gaza. This is some of the camps they're building there. They've got 40,000 tents to house, house civilians. Um, and uh, so they're, they've got the plan. Uh, the Egyptian proposal that the, that's on the table this weekend outlines the return of all hostages in a phased end to Gaza war. I mentioned this, that it, it goes over many, many weeks. And, uh, and all it does it in the end is leave Hamas standing. And if they're still standing at the end of this Gaza war, then that means they win. And all the Muslim radicals in the world will have uh, be emboldened because little Hamas was able to defeat Israel because they survived Israel's uh, attempts to el eliminate them. But we're past the point of no return. They have to be eliminated. Israeli sources uh, say if Hamas insists on remaining in power, there will be no deal. Amen to that. Um, this is an interesting thing. I don't think you can probably read it. It's kind of small here. But um, in Al Jazeera, I was reporting on several countries in Europe that are considering simply recognizing a Palestinian state. The interesting thing, though, in the Al Jazeera uh, text is that they had a hashtag at the end of that text that actually said, uh, hashtag Al-Aqsa Flood. That was Al Jazeera, the supposed uh, Arabic uh, from Qatar uh, network, but saying Al-Aqsa Flood as, as their hashtag. That was the name of Hamas's operation on October 7th to kill 1,200. Actually, they wanted to kill all, all the Jews, and it was called the Al-Aqsa Flood. And... Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera is still using that. Actually, Al Jazeera has been kicked out of Israel. Their offices are closed down and Israel's raided their offices. and They no longer can operate as a news bureau because they're so biased for Hamas. Well, poll, 72% of Americans back Israeli operation in Gaza. You wouldn't think that from the media. The media has been talking so much about the college students, a tiny percentage of radicals, which are about 50-50 students and 50% uh, agitators from off the campuses that aren't students. Uh, and it sounds like the whole world or the whole nation is against uh, Israel. But a Harvard survey says 72% of Americans back the Israeli operation in, in Gaza. So just make sure you understand that. Um, now, Schumer, after he originally criticized the idea, is now poised to invite Netanyahu to address Congress. Uh, Speaker, House Speaker Mike Johnson already gave the invitation, but Schumer has to agree to it for it to be a, a message in front of Congress. I think it's going to be a tremendous, very powerful and timely message when this occurs. I'd like to think it's right after they defeat Hamas and conquer Rafah, the last city in Gaza. Here's a report. Saudi Arabia has decided to normalize relations with Israel. Um, I believe that is happening. Uh, I, I personally would predict it won't happen under Biden. He would like to have that as a, as a plum, uh, you know, success. I, I think it's very likely that it'll be after the election before Saudis uh, formally announce it. And uh, so we need to pray uh, into that. 
Here's another good headline from Saudi Arabia. They take action against Israel defamers online. They've launched a wave of arrests of Saudis who attack Israel and identify with Hamas on their social networks since the Gaza war. That's pretty big. Hallelujah. Uh, long live October 7th. Vancouver protesters praise the terrorist group Hamas and the other groups. Such, such uh, deception and, and blindness. Well, Biden is considering bringing Gaza Palestinians to the U.S. and giving them citizenship. Numbers show that could be disastrous. 90% of Gazans say that they were glad that Hamas did the October 7th massacre. What's the percentage? If it's 9 out of 10, if we bring 10 Gazans or 1,000 Gazans, and 900 of them are, are in favor of Hamas terrorism, is that what we should do and bring those to America and give them all kinds of privileges and help and housing and, and debit cards and all that they're doing, even a pathway to citizenship, part of this proposal? No, it's got to be stopped. Uh, here's an interesting comment from Trump. Uh, he's actually, he was working when he was president, part of the, uh, part of the uh, Abraham Accords was moving towards the, the two-state solution. I said even at the time that that was dead. Now Trump is recognizing that. He says most people thought it was going to be a two-state solution. He says, I'm not sure a two-state solution anymore is going to work. So I'm glad he is uh, he's adjusting his view on that, I think, towards reality and towards what the Bible says. Not going to be another Palestinian state. Uh, Hamas sources say that Hania, their top, top leader in Qatar, is going to remain in Turkey for an undefined period. He may actually end up uh, exiled in Turkey because Qatar is getting ready to actually uh, kick all the Hamas leaders out of Qatar. Uh, this is a report that's been reported from several good solid sources that, that uh, Sinwar, the Hamas leader in Gaza, is using at least 15 to 20 hostages as human shields, literally right around his family in the, in the tunnels underground Rafah. Um, Hamas plays Westerners for fools. Any peace will be a deception. Well, that's the truth. Any peace that, that Israel would agree to will just be a, a lie. Uh, Hamas rocket barrage ruins, ru uh, wounds 14 near the Karam Shalom crossing from Israel into Gaza, where all the aid trucks are coming in, in southern Gaza. And guess where these rockets were shot from that, that wounded 14 people? in the crossing. They came from Rafah. I think, I think Israel needs to go into Rafah and clean out the rest of the militants in there, the terrorists. This is a statement from some Gazan people who managed to escape. They had to pay a lot of money. I think they paid $8,000 per family member of nine or 10 people. Uh, and it, so they, had, they were wealthy people and they managed to get out. This is their statement. We hate Hamas like we hate Israel. They hate Israel, but they hate Hamas just as much. So uh, there's definitely going to be a lot of uh, changes going on here. Um, now, considering the north of Israel, uh, Lebanon and Syria, IDF is preparing for major offensive, according to the IDF uh, chief. There were something like 80 rockets fired from, from uh, Lebanon, and Syria, uh, Lebanon into uh, Israel just today. And uh, you might remember this young boy, a 14-year-old, I think he's a yeah, 14-year-old boy in Samaria, so-called West Bank, biblical Samaria. He was a shepherd watching sheep and was killed by, uh, by Hamas terrorists. And the terrorists that killed him are now in line to receive over a million dollars in payments through the years by the Palestinian Authority because they actually pay to slay. Anybody, anytime you kill a, a Jew, you actually get paid. You might be in jail <laughs> for the rest of your life, but you get this money into your account and goes to your family, and they actually pay for murdering terrorists. Um, there's an issue going on. I, I can't get into it. I don't have time to get into it here, but um, Congress passed an anti-Semitism bill. Uh, it's a good thing, in my view, uh, and those that are saying that it's not, are misunderstanding the actual wording of the bill and the wording of the international definition of, of uh, 
of the um, of the Holocaust. Um, I can just zero in on it just a little bit here uh, because the phrase that they're they're uh, criticizing is in this part right here. Um, Using symbols and images host associated with classic anti-Semitism, example, claims of Jews killing Jesus or blood libel to characterize Israel or Israelis. That's part of the definition of anti-Semitism. People that use the phrase Jews, uh, Christ killers, Jews killed Jesus. Well, the biblical account is clear. But that's not what they're talking about. They're not talking about contradicting what the Bible says. What they're saying is using that phrase, Christ killers against Jews, is anti-Semitic. Because, of course, not all Jews, or in fact, no Jews alive today, were involved in killing Jesus. And, of course, the Bible says that the Romans, the Gentiles, and the Jews are responsible for killing Jesus. And, oh, by the way, so am I, and so are you in the sense he died for our sins. God is the one who actually killed Jesus. He allowed his son to be crucified for our salvation. So I, I said that way fast, I know, but uh, I hope, hope you get a little bit of clarity about uh, the misunderstandings going on in uh, some of the Republicans that are opposing that. Uh, meanwhile, an anti-Semitism expert says that Qatari billions of dollars have been used as soft power to influence the campus culture. And uh, you're hearing quite a bit about that on the news. Uh, here, Qatar is reportedly prepared to expel Hamas leaders. Uh, I, that would be a good thing. I hope they do that. And then finally, the Gaza Health Ministry, which is run by Hamas and has been saying that there are 30,000 civilians that have been killed by Israel in the, in the Gaza war, now admit they can only provide names for 10,000 that it says have died. So that's still a lot of people, but that's, there's never been a war in history with the proportion of civilians killed in the war to combatants killed has never been such a low percentage of civilians killed in a war. So uh, please pay attention. Please read the, the news and the, get the real truth. Amen. Well, Let's pr close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. We love the truth, Lord. You said those that are perishing are perishing because they do not have a love of the truth. And therefore, you have given them over to a, 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 a false a spirit, a lying spirit, that they would believe the lie, that, that you yourself uh, condemn them to, to their ignorance and their blindness but it's because they don't love the truth. Lord, I know that every person listening to me who loves the truth, if they'll search out for the truth, read the Bible, find legitimate sources of news, I know, Lord, that you'll reveal the truth. And I pray for that. Thank you, Father God. Bless Israel. Bless the troops, Lord. Bless Bibi Netanyahu. And let your will be done, Father. And your kingdom come on earth as it is, is in heaven. In the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua ben Yehovah. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.